taxes. It's when the government steals your money. Taxes is the cost we often pay for living in a civilized society. It's an amount of money that is extracted from every individual or sometimes entities that operate within a country or within a union, for instance. And what it does is that that money is then spent in a effective way that improves the well-being of everybody within the society and propels us forward and allows us to invest in things that normally a private investor wouldn't really have an interest in investing and spending money on. And typically it just ends up producing a lot more positive utility than if we didn't have a system of taxation and people and the allocation of resources was only operated on the principle of how private actors would be able to benefit from it. However, um, there are a few reasons for this being the case, and I'm specifically going to be talking about different models of like taxation systems very broadly. So the differences between progressive, regressive, and flat taxes. Very simply, a progressive tax, the percentage of your income paid goes up the more money that is being made or the more money above a certain threshold is being made. Regressive taxation is the opposite, actually, where the more money you make, the less percentage of your income is taken. And a flat tax is same taxes all across the board, no matter how much money is being made. Now, there are often arguments that are being made here in regards to, oh, why is it just that a government takes more of my money just because I make more? And there's even some people that say ridiculous things like, oh, you know, now that I make a bit more money, I'm actually losing more in taxes and I'm actually effectively making less money than I would have you know, had I not made that extra bit of money. And most of the time when people say this, it's not true. But if it is, it's just a fault in the tax code more than a fault in, you know, what's it called? Progressive taxation as a system. So the reason why this isn't the case is because if you have, for example, like marginal tax rates, where you can see that income earned above a certain threshold is taxed at a higher percentage, for instance, then there is no conceivable way ever where if you make more money, you will be earning less or you will be having less disposable income than if you had to earn less money. So this is just like a common argument. It's a really bad one that you're thrown around sometimes that I'm just going to give like a, a quick address or two here. But there is another underlying principle to why we typically like to tax things progressively rather than regressively with a flat tax. And beyond number one, which is that you extract more revenue by doing progressive taxation, um, it's that money isn't actually equally worth to every person or depending on who has it. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's take a sum of money like $5,000. And the reason fundamentally why we have money, why we have an economy, or why we have any form of social structures really, is to the extent that they can benefit us as people or us as a society, right? So let's take a sum of money like $5,000, okay? Now, the same amount of money you know, numerically $5,000 um, is much more worth and produces so much more utility when it's given to somebody that may be making $30,000 a year as compared to somebody who's making $200,000 a year, right? So the difference between someone making $20,000, uh, sorry, $30,000 a year and $35,000 a year is going to be a lot more meaningful and a lot of impactful to that person's life and well-being to $5,000 being allocated towards somebody who's making $200,000 a year. So they're making now $205,000 a year. This can be also like measured empirically and it has been in a lot of different ways where you measure basically the, the utilization of money based on how much money it is and on whose income classes. This can even be tied into something as like direct as the amount of like happiness people experience or their overall well-being as a result. You can see that it plateaus. I think in the US it's around $100,000, uh, if I'm not mistaken, where the amount of like well-being and like happiness you extract from how much money you make plateaus pretty sharply. And at that point, more money you make doesn't give you as good of an exchange on, you know, your well-being and your happiness as the money preceding that did. And as an effect of that, if we operate within a utilitarian framework where we seek to maximize like well-being for as many individuals as possible, we should seek to ensure that our taxation system takes as little money as possible from people to whom that money is worth a lot when it comes to their well-being and their health and their happiness and try to take more instead from people who that money isn't going to make much of a tangible difference for in their well-being. And this is can also be tied into things like just general inequality, right? 
typically if we try to minimize wealth inequality and the gaps between individual groups of people, we can ensure that there will be more money just in an economy, genuinely allocated, generally ad, uh, allocated towards people making, you know, uh, between, you know, like zero and $60,000 a year, as compared to there being a bunch of people lying at $30,000, and then all that excess money being allocated instead to an individual who already makes a bunch of money and having that be added on top of it. And this is agreed upon even in like, you know, economics courses, right? This is something that is frequently taught when it comes to taxation systems, where the money has the most productivity and where it has the most utility to individuals in any given system. This is just a, you know, a concept I wanted to, to talk about for a minute and not necessarily clear up, but just make people more like aware over that money isn't worth the same to, uh, to every individual, depending, it obviously depends a lot on how much money they're already making. And even though it might seem really obvious when somebody says, oh, you know, that amount of money could be spent much better by, you know, a working class family than somebody buying another yacht, it's a lot more effective when you understand the principles and the really mechanization underlying that and the, you know, the thing about diminishing returns and how the money's better allocated from a well-being and health perspective towards somebody making just generally less money than somebody making more money. Additionally, typically the less money you make, the more money as a percentage of your income you're going to spend in the economy as a whole. So why does this matter? Well, for instance, let's say that we have the ability to give $5,000 stimulus checks to either some of the poorest people in the economy or some of the wealthiest people in the economy. Um, if you give it to a bunch of the wealthiest people in the economy, the chances of that money then circulating in the economy and using to build up businesses and being taken in taxes and just generally providing utility for that person is going to be much lower than if that same amount of money had been allocated to people who are making just generally less money because they're more likely to spend it. And this is what we want in an economy, right? We don't want an economy where nobody spends any money and where money's just sitting, not producing any value in the economy. We want the money, uh, an economy where money is constantly circulating and it's more likely that people who generally have less money as an aggregate are going to spend more as a percentage of their income in the economy as a whole than somebody who have, makes a lot of money that, you know, once their needs are met and their need for luxury goods are met, they just end up saving it and putting it on, you know, like a savings account somewhere. Sometimes even, you know, like offshore and tax savings, for instance, which are just an extremely negative effect when it comes to, uh, to just like taxation revenue and the amount of potential good that tax revenue could have done should have been able to be extracted in a in a good way. Um, so that's another reason why, you know, progressive taxation and general like wealth or distribution programs and inequality. Oh, sorry, the first two things are a good thing and inequality being a bad thing because you want to seek to maximize the utility the money does for both those people. But also then when it comes to the amount of the amount of money, the likelihood for people to spend that money, the amount of good that money can do for the economy as a whole. So yeah, that's just a quick explanation of the utility of uh, of money and how it varies depending on who is holding the money and uh, and how we should you know sort of organize our economic systems and our taxation systems and our wealth redistribution policies based on those principles.